Welcome back to the channel. Well, we're back at Ralph's Performance and we're working on the gray truck again, the Whipple truck. And in the last video, you saw that we did the rear diff and it swapped it into a limited slip. Today, we're doing the fuel system upgrades so that this truck can run some E85. Uh, we'll be doing injectors and uh, a dual fuel pump from uh, JD Solutions. It's a JD Solutions pump. Uh, it's available on uh, Oz Tuning's website and we'll be adding a little more boost so we'll get ready to get started here i'll let you guys see uh, everything that's on the table that came that we'll be working with and we'll dive into this we have everything that came fuel pump module the harness optional harness uh the, what do we got there what do, what do we call it hop switch LED, not a hop switch. Oh, yeah, you got a hop switch. Yeah. And what we got some injectors and a little fun size pulley. Man of the hour. <laughs> right, so we're going to dive into the entire install and take it from there. So part of the install for uh, the fuel pump upgrade, um, you have to get back here behind the uh, driver's side rear tire. Um, there's a, a hose clamp that holds the Filinec tube. Uh, it's a seven millimeter. I usually use a quarter drive um, ratchet, an extension, and a seven millimeter swivel, which is the setup I have right now. And you can usually get in here the clamp is usually somewhere in this vicinity, so you're able to just go ahead and loosen it up. I already started loosening it up, but I'll show you guys when I go to tighten it back up what it looks like and how to get to it. All right, so we already disconnected the fill neck tube, so the next step is you got an EVAP line here, and you got the fuel pressure line. Um, just wanna be careful. I usually let the truck sit for a little bit before I actually, I'll do something else. Uh, like I started with the fill neck. That should give the actual, um, the actual line pressure a chance to come down a little bit so you don't get sprayed in the face and um, so I'm going to show you here evap two buttons like two little clips you squeeze them and then you're just gonna just pull it out and pull back and it comes off the fuel line clip it's a little blue tab here there's two tabs you push back towards the rear you push down a little hard to see but I'll show you once it's on the floor and it, it'll come right off and then you just want to you know you can take your rag or something if you if you feel like the pressure might not be relieved already as you can see it had a little bit on it but she's pretty much done now always have like a little little pan to catch residual fuel that's gonna run out of the line itself and then that eventually will stop after a while it's coming out of this side not out of the, the rail side so that'll stop after a while like so so now you got your fuel line and your evap already disconnected um, the next step we're going to do is we're gonna, there's, there's two uh, bolts uh, one in the front here one in the back those are for the uh, fuel tank strap uh, that's going to be a 15 millimeter I usually use a 15 millimeter uh, socket and extension and uh, you can use some muscle and do it by hand, or you can actually do it um, with a cordless impact. Um, that's what I'm getting ready to use now. And also you're gonna need to support the gas tank. Um, I always tell the customers when they come to me um, to bring the truck in with, you know, a little less than a quarter or about a quarter of the tank. It's easy to deal with. Um, definitely trying to move this thing around. Um, you have this much length of the tank so what will happen is, if you're on this end, you think you got it, and this thing tips, it gets heavy on the back end, and you got nobody back there, then you're gonna wind up uh, ripping out the harnesses and stuff. So just gotta be careful. Less fuel, the better. So 15 mil socket, extension, 3 8 impact um, gun. And I already got the, uh, the trans jack holding it up over here. 
So now, gotta cut this guy loose. He's back here. Same deal. Put your bolts to the side because you're gonna be reusing those. And what I usually do is I'll swing the straps out of the way. Give a little bend so you can, you know, I usually take them out of the truck so I don't have to worry about fighting with it when it comes when the tank comes down. And this one's a lot easier. He's a lot shorter. This is the front one. Rear, front. So you, you can't mix and match them. I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody will mess it up. But the front one is always smaller than the back one, right? Then we're gonna come down a little bit, and there's some connections that we need to to address. All right. So now we're on the top of the tank here. Um, there's a couple connectors that you're gonna have to disconnect. You got one here for the evap per solenoid. It's got a squeeze clamp. A clip, I should say. You're gonna just push the clip in a little bit, and you squeeze it, and she should come right off. Like that, so that one's off. Um, the, the EVAP ones on the top here, you don't have to touch, because that's the one that goes from, from, from the front to the back. I'm actually in here so you guys can like really see what's going on. Um, there's another connector here for the actual fuel pump. That's the gray, gray connector. It's got like a little clip that's clipped onto the actual EVAP tube. You just unclip that. And it actually has like a red tab in it. So if you're, you know, a lot of times the dry shaft is in the way. I actually moved the dry shaft out so I can show you guys what's going on. You don't have to remove the dry shaft. You're basically going to have to finger it a little bit. Um, but there is a gray connector here with a red tab. You slide the tab back, that's the locking tab. So this part here, the actual push part, you can't take it off unless you, you gotta pull the red clip back and then you're able to release the actual uh, fuel pump connector. Then you have one more here for the EVAP system as well. It's a, it's a black connector. See if I can squeeze my little arm up in here. Press the button. Pull, pull back, same deal. So now that's gonna be hanging. And then you got one more connector here. It's a little, it's a black hose. Um, and there, behind it, it's gonna be another button you're gonna push. So I'm gonna show you. That guy there, it's kind of a pain. I usually use like a little pick with a 90 degree angle on it. You pull that up and then you push the button. That releases the locking part of this clip. So you can actually slide it off. So those are your connections there. We're all off there. So now I'm gonna just hold everything up so you can see there's nothing holding or there's nothing else still connected to the actual gas tank. Like we just took all the stuff off. You don't need to disconnect none of the EVAP stuff. When I let the tank down, I'm gonna show you how the tank is still gonna have all the stuff on it. And uh, we're gonna lower it down right now. So the first thing I usually do on these things, uh, before opening up the tank, uh, if the dory comes closer, you get a, a good view of how much road debris gets kicked up on top of the tank. Um, I never open up the tank when it has that much debris. So what I'll usually do is I'll take light air, low gun, give it a cleaning. where you can get in there and not drop anything from, from the road inside of the tank. All right, so over here, there's another push button. So what I usually do is I'll disconnect this guy so I can rotate this guy and push the tabs on him. So you can take him out of the way because you're gonna need to be able to knock this ring off. And the other guy here, it's gonna be two, two tabs 
you're gonna get up under, my fingers are small, and uh, you just take that little clip off of there. Then it's gonna be a button here, you're gonna push on the inside, and you just pull him back. That's the actual fuel pump uh, pressure side. All right, so you can actually just, you know, let them hang out or something. I used to just tuck them over there so I don't have to worry about them flapping around and getting in my way when I'm trying to do what I need to do here. Um, they do make a tool for this um, that you can use. You don't need the tool. Um, I used to just take a screwdriver and a hammer and I'll just knock this ring around. Just be mindful where you're knocking it around. The tank is plastic if you slip. I mean, the tank is pretty thick up in this top area. Just be mindful not to go crazy on it. Um, a few taps and it just thinks shit, the locking ring should come off. So I'm gonna screwdriver, my hammer. I use just like kinda get on an angle here, kinda lay it flush, give it a couple taps. It'll come right up. It is spring loaded, so it's gonna pop back at you. Um, just keep uh, keep an idea of where how the pump laid in there. So you know that your electrical connector is facing almost near somewhere in the vicinity of this filler neck tube. Um, it is idiot proof. There is a big notch over here that this when this pump lays in here, it lays in this between these two um, anchor points for the actual locking ring. Okay, so you can pull that guy up. Be a little careful because you still have some where we couldn't blow the debris off of. We're gonna start pulling this guy out. There's another clip here that you need to squeeze. You gotta rotate them a little bit. I'm gonna show you once I get it out. He's gonna fall in the tank, it's okay. So you gotta get a little fuel spilling. So I usually just take the fuel and just pour it back in there. Dirty side, further away from the actual inlet hole because you don't wanna put that road grind stuff in there. Or you can pour it into a container or whatever. But being as this side is still clean, there's no uh, debris in the tank for me just doing that. So now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just wipe all this stuff down. Um, you're gonna be reusing this, the O-ring for the actual fuel pump, the seal. Um, you can check it just to make sure there's no, it's not like all dry rotted. You kinda like roll it around. And if you start seeing like cracks and stuff, you can go ahead and replace it. Um, but if it looks good, looks fresh, you know, nice and soft, then it's still good. So I'm gonna get a, a rag and wipe this down and then wipe down the actual ceiling area that this actually lays against. So you're gonna see, there's gonna be a lot of buildup here where that seal actually laid from when you, you know, when you start to wipe around. And I'll usually kind of collect it in one spot and then Take it out. You grab it with your fingers. Kind of like just put it somewhere, everywhere but inside the hole. So now the surface area is nice and clean. So that gasket can actually seal and do its job. You don't want debris between the actual seal and the actual tank and the opposite side of the pump surface face to the seal. And I'll just take another one, just go ahead and clean him up. You know, so now that thing is nice and clean. You can lay it back here because it's not going to interfere in anything. Now we got a nice fresh start. So this is the upgraded fuel pump. I'm gonna go ahead and do the install on that part. It's a drop-in, ready to go deal. Really nice piece. Um, the work that this guy did, it looks like, like it came from Ford already. Um, 
I got no complaints. I like the, what I'm seeing. I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, good OEM connections and uh, it's a really nice piece. And it does support the fuel that you guys are gonna need out there for your application for this particular setup. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this guy onto the bottom of the pad of the actual fuel pump. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drop it back down in there and then I'm gonna reach back in there and grab it, okay? So we're gonna get the pump back in there because you can't connect it outside of the tank. So it's a little bit of a task. So I usually lean it. Then he's sitting like right here. A little hard for you to see. So now I grabbed it. Now I know that this pump needs to get needs to turn. So I'm just gonna hold this piece. So now the pump needs to sit like this in this area. So now this guy here, the actual nipple for this connection here is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and connect him. And you'll hear a click. So that's locked in now. So that's how it's going to go because you want to make sure that you connect it close as possible of where the pump is actually going to sit when it's at home. So now that's all connected. You can just double check and make sure you don't have any interference with your um, your fuel level gauge. That's looking all good in there for me. I can't really get in there with a camera just to let you guys see. Now, the pump is kind of like, you know, it's, 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 it's laying like kind of like neutral, which is a good sign. There's no binding, there's no nothing, you know? So, I know I'm in the right spot. Um, I don't have to worry about that hose that is just hooked up if it's routed over this way where the, where the filler gauge is at. Um, what a, where, where the actual float for the gauge um, is at. So that basically that hose comes across like this. You wanna just hook it basically directly in between the other hoses that are there and your filler gauge float is on this side over here and I don't have to worry about any interference of when I go to put it back inside the car, this thing reads, it's got a full tank when we know we just bought it in with a quarter or less. So now that's in there. She's saying what she needs to be. Then you're gonna take that ring, you're gonna lay him back on there. There's gonna be a few big cutouts for that ring to lay in, because if you try to turn it this way, you can't get it to lock in, so you're gonna just, you can rotate it until it drops down. Now that it drops down, you can kinda get it started by hand. And then you're gonna take your, your hammer and your screwdriver, same deal, lay it against there, not contacting the tank, but I'm just contacting the ring, and just start knocking it back around. So that's done. So now it's already, you wanna knock this ring all the way until it hits the actual stops, and that's it. Now this thing is locked in. Now you can go ahead and start reconnecting your stuff that you have. Uh, you can use a little Vaseline on there if you want it, um, but these seals are still nice and soft and wet from taking apart. So you just push this guy on to heat clips, clips on. You can put the locking clip back in. So that's how that goes. I'm gonna take this guy, which is part of the EVAP system. And you can put him back on. This guy, you can leave the cap on for now until you get back up inside the vehicle. And you can pull the cap off if you don't want the debris to get inside. This guy here, same deal, he clipped on. Just like that. So now that's done. The other end of these connectors are gonna be inside the, inside the vehicle. And we're gonna go inside and show you um, how to run the harness from front to rear. I usually run the harness from front to rear first. So I won't do the harness from back to front. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the harness install. And in this video, you're gonna see me installing injectors. Um, so just blow, take a little, the blow gun, light air. And just clean back in here. You don't want nothing falling down to get the holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just a couple, uh, disconnect a couple things. Um, 
you don't need to disconnect this stuff uh, for to do the fuel pump install. But again, I'm doing the injectors and the fuel pump install at the same time. It's okay. All right, so now this rail is disconnected. I'm gonna grab my Allen key so I can pull the actual rail out. So for the Whipple stuff, the Allen that's holding down this rail is a uh, five millimeter Allen head. So I'm gonna go ahead and break, break these guys loose. So that one's out. Now you're gonna have two spacers down here. So I usually just lift up and then the injectors should come out with the rail. You know, you can move the, take the collars out if you want. So you don't have to worry about them disappearing on you. Okay, got one more down here all right so now that's the injector rail all right so we're going to take these injectors out and we're going to put in these uh deech works 95 deals first thing we're going to do is we're only going to go ahead and pull the actual injectors out of the rail you want to put them back in the same orientation that they're in um for the spray pattern um, so if you notice, driver side bank injectors are all facing this way. Passenger side bank is going to be facing the opposite way. Um, so you want to put that back the same way you see the injectors, like I have them right now. Oh. Of some injectors, they give you this grease. If you don't have this grease. You can use Vaseline to put on the seal. It's fine. Do it all the time. But I'm going to use this little packet here. So you're just going to put a little bit on the O-ring. And you can take your finger and wipe it around. Mm -hmm. So you don't tear mm -hmm. the O-ring when, mm -hmm. when you're putting it inside of the rail. Give it a little rock. There we go. It's pretty much they were like almost like on a 45 degree. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dab on each one of these and then take my finger and go ahead and run it around the seal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back and we're facing. Truck. You can do yourself a favor if you want it to. You could go ahead and, you know, kind of connect the connectors if you want it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just place these little collars back in their places. And go ahead, find the hole. Okay, everything looks good. And then you can push straight down. Okay, so now she's bottomed out. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just connect my, my connectors. You can actually hit a click. You know she's on there. Okay. So 
So now we know the injectors are facing us the way they're supposed to be facing. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the Allens back in. So now I can connect the fuel pressure sensor back, connect the fuel line back on. Okay, the evap stuff I'm going to leave out for a minute because I'm going to go ahead and and put in the hop switch um, adapter. So you can go ahead and hook your lines back up for your fuel rail in the back of the blower and the front of the blower. That's all snapped in. So we all locked and loaded there. So now in that kit for the fuel pump, back to that, uh, he gives you a adapter from eighth inch to um, three eighths MPT adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw out this uh, three eighths MPT plug. And um, I'm gonna show you what we gotta do as far as the install of the adapter and then with the hop switch. Allen plug there. Um, it's going to be a, uh, 5 16 Allen. I'm going to use a 3 8 ratchet and extension and break him loose. Take him out of there. And the other thing is, uh, when you put your injectors in, just to make sure you ain't got no, no binding. You can just see if the injectors move around easy by hand. You should be able to rotate them a little bit. So I know they're not sitting there binding up. You know, they feel good. That one's good. That one's good. So they all feel good. Okay. Meant to do that in the beginning. I'm kind of jumping around. So just a little note. You just make sure that you got no issues with the injector seated into the actual housing on the intake. So this is the fitting that he gives you. 3 8 on one side, 8 inch on the other, MPT. It's all pipe, pipe uh, thread. Um, looks like he might supply a little bit of... Um, Thread sealer on there. I'm gonna put a little bit myself. Just run it around. I usually keep my finger on the hole while I'm rolling it around just so I don't get none inside of the hole. So the hex nut part of this fitting is a three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this by hand. And then it's gonna be hand tight. Take your three quarter socket. Go ahead and run that baby in there. Again, hand tight. You don't need to go crazy with it. You don't want to go crazy because you don't want to crack the intake manifold. That's good. So now we got the 7 PSI hob switch that's applied in the kit. Looks like a little bit of tef uh, Teflon paste or something that's on there ready thread sealant. So I'm going to put a little bit more myself. I don't know if they all come like that, but just a little bit of that. Roll it around, the hole is nice and clear. And the hex side that you're gonna be tightening down, to, the, the hex side, you're gonna use this side to actually tighten down on it. You don't wanna grab it by the actual sensor or the, or, or the face of the, the body down here. 
Um, it's a 716 wrench, fits on there. So you can get it started by hand first. So you can go ahead, start tightening this baby up. I usually like to wind up with the connector either facing on the side so it's easier to disconnect if you had to. Um, so you're gonna run it down because she starts to get nice and tight. You don't need to kill it, same deal. So I'm gonna pretty much stop around here. It's nice and straight. If I ever had disconnected, the tab is facing here versus back here. Um, that's the way I like to do things. Easy access. All right, so now I'm gonna go and install the EVAP stuff and the brake booster line. And uh, take it from there. Okay. Put that back where it came from. Hook in this little EVAP solenoid. Go ahead and hook this back in. EVAP. that hook my brake booster back in okay I'm gonna hook this back in all right on this side just so you guys can see some a little better I'm just gonna move some of this stuff out of the way here again um, there's a special tool for this to take this line off I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay. Or this is a fuel line disconnect tool. Um, sometimes I think I think Whipple gives you something in the kit to disconnect it if you have a Whipple on it. So you have the tool already. If you didn't throw it away, if you don't, you can you can actually buy these at Harbor Freight or something. So you're gonna get a little fuel there. Or you just kind of take the line, lay them up there. But the way that tool works is you snap it on there. So if it was sitting back, there's like little clips inside of there. Once you push that forward, it springs the clips back and you're able to pull the line off. And that's how that works. Now remember the orientation I was telling you how the injectors go? Um, that side faces this way, this side faces that way. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and just disconnect these. Try not to tug on the wire so much. You know, if you can grab the connector and push the tab, that'd be great. You don't wanna put injectors in and then you got a misfire. That's cause you done pulled the wire a little too much and it's got a bad contact. And now you're chasing something else. And you're supposed to be outside enjoying the car after all this stuff you installed. Okay, so now that's all disconnected. I'm gonna disconnect this front connector for the rail. That's off, back connector. Okay. up there now go ahead and pull this guy up rock it a little bit grab the injector at the same time like that come straight up grab this guy put him out the way now 
Same deal. We're gonna put them in the same way we see see the way they came out. So we just pull that guy. Okay. Some more of your super lube here. Big finger, run the rest of it around. That one. That guy's in there, he's in there, he's in there. So now, go ahead and put, rotate him. So you can get your connector on. Nice and loose. He's good. He's still good. So I need to go over here. Run him in. Still good. Still good. Alright, so we got no binding. Because I can rotate everybody. Reconnect my line. locked. You do your front one. He's on and the guy in the back. All right. So now that's all in. I'm going to leave this hose off for now. Now we're gonna start running the wire for the extra pump that we installed with that kit. All right, so we got the fuel pump harness that came in the kit. I'm gonna show you the install of this thing here. Um, we're gonna start from the fuse box and work our way back around. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, he tells you in the kit, uh, there's a tab over here. In order to get the fuse box out, uh, the fuse box cover off, not the fuse box out. There's a tab here. You just want to push it to the side, lift up, and then just, just kind of like let it hang out there. Then you can lift this guy up and take him out of the way because it's a two-piece cover. And then you're going to take this guy off. Now we're going to have to do some trimming, probably on the edges. I already did some trimming from when I installed the uh, Whipple for the actual fuse holder that they give you. Um, so I'm going to show you that in a few once we get the relays and stuff mounted. Um, in the kit, he tells you to, you can mount the fuel pump relay and the, the fuse holder over here in this corner. So I'm going to drill um, two holes and, um, and then he gives you two little plastic push tabs to actually hold these guys in place. So first one you're going to start with, relay is going to go first because you're going to bend him down. So I'm going to drill a little hole here, bend him down, then he's going to lay right beside him like so. So just in case if you ever have, you pop the fuse or something, you can actually get to it. So but I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole for this guy, mount him, then I'll drill a hole for this guy. And then um, we'll put the push tabs in, bend this down, and then we're going to go ahead and um, start. Uh, running the wire that he has for power and ground and the key on trigger So one is going to be To the battery uh, Terminal here, which is hot all the time This guy here is going to be a ground It's located over here in this corner And this other guy is going to go to uh, I want to say he said fuse 35 and I'm going to confirm that in a minute So let's get started here So you're going to use drill quarter inch drill bit Okay, so you can go ahead and take this guy here, move him out of the way, 
for now. You're gonna put the relay far as far forward, far backward as possible, and uh, hanging off the edge just a little bit so you can actually make the bend for the relay to relax down at the bottom down here. So we're gonna put it right about there. Little paint marker. X marks the spot. Go ahead and. You don't need to go crazy. Always just check and make sure nothing behind there. You're not gonna sting a wire or something. So we're good to go. There's nothing behind there, I already confirmed it. These are the little uh, push pins that it gives you to hold down the actual fuse holder and the actual relay. Push them in there. Push them down in there, okay? You can now at this point you can actually leave the fuse holder beside it and then you can take him one finger holding the bracket the other one pushing down little dot marks the spot same size hole quarter inch drill bit nice and slow okay so now your fuse holder your fuse is being held by this little push tab, and then you got the relay sitting over here. That's bent down nice and out of the way. At this, at this point, you got a ground wire over here. So he wants you to take this guy here, and there's a, a factory chassis ground here. So I'm gonna take that, that's gonna be an eight millimeter bolt. I like to use like gear wrenches. These things are awesome. battery also you guys knew that already I usually took off the negative side just let it hang over there and come over here to the first stud where if you if you already have a, a whipple on your, your truck um, th this is where I actually got my positive for the intercooler pump relay take this guy Put him on top. I'll show you guys what it looks like in a minute. Hand tight, don't go crazy. It's not the plastic holding the actual terminal in there. Okay. So I usually take him and I'll bend him down a little bit. Because remember the cover still needs to go on. So it'll be more like a 90. Okay, now this wire here. We're gonna pull um, fuse 35. Let me confirm that. So fuse 35 is right here. I'm gonna show you on here. So the, the actual relay box is sitting like this. Same way I'm looking at it. It's the same way all the fuses are going. Fuse 35. So one, two, three, four, okay? So it's gonna be one, two, three, three over, right? One, two, three. And then fuse 35 is gonna be, um, it's gonna be the fourth one up. One, two, three, four. So it's gonna be that 25 amp right there. So you're gonna take this guy, put him in there, and the other end of the holder, because the, the fuse holder is gonna have the fuse for the actual um, pump, and then you wanna put back the existing fuse that was actually in that holder, which is gonna go here.
Okay. We're gonna put him. In there. Um, in order for this cover to go back down and lay flush, um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming. Um, he wants you to actually trim part of the, the actual fuse holder case. So basically, your wire is gonna wind up laying like this. So in order for the, for the cover to sit down flush, we need to make a little trim here for the wire to make the turn and be like nice and neutral so there's no, no tension on it. And we need to make a little um, cut right here for the wire to actually sit in. So again, you can use your white paint marker to get an idea. So I'm gonna trim it somewhere in here. And then we know we gotta trim. I'm gonna move the wire so you can see the white marks. So in these locations is where you're gonna trim so the wire can lay in there nice and flush and not get caught between the actual cover and the actual housing. Um, I usually use a pair of dykes. I'll just snip, snip, and then break the tab and then it should come right out. So let's see what happens. So, came right out cut it right where I wanted, wanted the wire to, to go through. Same deal on this side. You know, make sure you got some nice, fine uh, wire cutters um, that are sharp. Or if you got a Dremel or something, you can go in there and get a little crazy. So now, your fuse wire is laying in there nice and neutral. You can close the, you'll be able to close the cover now without having any, any uh, interference with anything. Um, you know, at this point, you're actually done over here, so if you wanna just go over, make sure everything's nice and tight, you can. Make sure your ground is tight. That's nice and tight, okay? So now, I'm gonna put this cover in first. So now, see how the cover goes on with no problem without any binding or anything. And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing. So that's that. So now all your wires are ran nice and neat. Everything's out of the way. You can go ahead and put back the other part of this connector that kind of rests on the actual um, cover. So now you're done there. Now the next step is you're gonna start to run this actual harness. Let me get some stuff out of the way here. All right, so this is the rest of the harness. Okay, that needs to go to the back of the vehicle. So, he wants you to run it like factory. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back behind the blower, we're gonna come back around, and then we're gonna come towards the front. Um, we don't wanna go towards the booster area because of the header. Um, we wanna stay away from the heat um, with this harness. So he has you go from here, follow this harness all the way around, behind the blower, then you're gonna zip tie all this stuff up, then it's gonna come uh, towards the front of the driver's side valve cover and then down by the actual um, cam sensor area. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So basically, we know this is the longest point. We kind of stretch them out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and, and snake him through here first. Push them back behind the blower. Bear with me, I'm a little guy. Yeah. Let's 
So you can go right back behind the blower and you can start making your way around. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and start getting it where it needs to be. Just to give you guys an idea. So as you're pulling, you're snaking it around. You can kind of just go ahead and let this guy just kind of like just dump through the wheel well because he's going to be going through that location. Okay, so you're going to keep going. And go ahead and pull this other wire through. That's the ground wire that's going to go in the back. You guys got to bear with me. I don't normally uh, do how to install videos. Long. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh -huh. Exactly what she said. Alrighty. Now you know when you're getting close because you're gonna see the last connector. That's gonna be your hop switch connector. What's nice about this kit is he actually wrapped the harness in the factory tape, which is pretty awesome. So when you look inside the engine bay, you don't uh actually see that you have an upgraded fuel pumps uh, fuel system in this thing which is pretty nice I like it so at this point we have a little slack here so what we're gonna start doing is we can go ahead and start zip tying this guy up to the existing harness how he says it in the instructions okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You're gonna need a bag of zip ties to do what you gotta do. So. I'm gonna go ahead and start from like here and then start working my way back. See if I like it there. Let's see. That looks great. So now I'm just gonna zip tie the rest of this. So that's nice and neutral there. It's all hooked up there. So I'm going to continue to run it along so you guys can see. He wants you to run along the actual injector, cam sensor harness, that main harness that's coming down. It's going to go down towards the fender well. So let's put the zip tie there. You don't have to remove the coat air. So I'm just going to go ahead and zip tie it around. Here. So we good there. We'll start coming down the cam cover. I mean the valve cover itself.
just hook up this line because we're done with this. I just left this off so you guys can see. So now everything under here is connected. So you don't have to go back unless you want to go back and just double check everything. The only thing we have to just hook back up would be the battery. Whipple. Okay, so on the rest of the insulation on the actual uh, harness that's gonna go to the back, you're gonna run the, the, the um, fuel pump harness along the front of the cam sensor harness here, or along the valve cover, come up by the brake line uh, holding bracket. You can put two zip ties there. I, he says one, you can put two. Um, then I ran it up, and I'm following this main harness, this big guy, because he's gonna go down behind, right up under the booster and along the frame rail. So I'm gonna show you where I put this, the actual zip ties at. So this is one where I'm actually cutting the end off of it. That's one there. That's the actual main harness that's gonna go down there. And then I have another one back over here. So I put um, zip ties here, there, and then when you lift the vehicle up or if you're on the ground, you could actually just start following that harness around. You want to just continue your zip ties down back around there. That actually keeps it keeps the harness away from the heat. Um, and you're actually following the stock harness of the actual truck, which is a nice uh, clean install. So I'm going to show you now. So this is the actual wire here. And the rest of it is coiled up down here on the floor. This main harness here, you're going to just follow that guy. So what I'm going to do is first, I don't know if this light is light to interfere or anything. You're all right. Alrighty, I'm gonna take this harness and run it down past back in here and I'm gonna show you where we're gonna do some uh, other zip, side, zip tie connections. So basically you just wanna uncoil, grab the actual end of it. So I'm just gonna pull this back so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then I'll show you, you kinda just pull back the wheel well a little bit. And then you're gonna just snake it. Snake it in there. And it's in the instructions. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about when you purchase the kit. But I'm just trying to give you a more detailed view. So basically, if I pull this back, that's the harness there. I'm just gonna zip tie the remaining of this wire and follow it to the back. So I already got a zip tie pretty much midway up here. So you guys can see it's up in here. So I said every six to eight inches, you can put a nice zip tie. It leaves no slack in the line and the harness itself, I should say. Alrighty. So now this is the actual harness. We're gonna follow the rest of, this is the body bushing that I was talking about here. That harness lays in a, like a plastic uh, channel here. So you can just continue to run him along this harness. So I'll put a nice zip tie right here. Oops, sorry. You hit the people. Oh man, I don't wanna hit the people. under the truck here. Now, I'm gonna take this harness and continue to run him along the rest of the harness here. So again, you got another frame rail to go past. Shoot him past over there. Just kinda like let him, let, let him chill. So I'm gonna start back up here because I know I got a zip tie not too far. Grab them right in here. It's actually a frame, it's actually a holder and the wire harness here right on the rail, which is good. Cut 
Okay. Turn them off. So I ain't got to go back. factory coming up on a factory connection for the fuel pump. Now let me go ahead and be a nice guy. This is why you don't just let things hang. One, this is one of the fuel tank bracket locations. Now, if I didn't pay attention to this and happen to crush this wire, I don't even know what this wire is for, but if I crush it between the actual bracket and the, and the, and the chassis, I'm pretty sure it's something in here that's got power going to it. And they could have just ran this on the top side. But now I just gotta be careful when I go back. But this is why we tie things up so you don't have any issues. So I'm just gonna put a zip tie in the middle here to hold that harness up there. If I knew what that went to, I would actually just reroute it, but I don't know what kind of connection they have on the other end. They probably have butt connectors or something. And I'm not trying to get, dig into that. So now, this guy here, this is the ground wire. Sorry about that. This is the ground wire. I'm gonna show you where they want you to put this at. It's gonna to go towards the back of the actual truck. So we know that our stock fuel pump connector is here. So I'm pretty much gonna just zip tie this up and have this guy in the same location of the original uh, connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this through the top here. This is the ground wire that I'm pushing on the top there. I'm gonna follow one of the factory harnesses. So he actually made it perfect where I can zip tie it and we don't have to worry about anything. You're gonna kind of just let this lay over here and it won't connect the ground in the field. there another zip tie because it wise the ground this is the chassis ground for the pump okay all right so you can go ahead and put a zip tie Right here in the middle, well, I mean, in the beginning, and then I'll put one more in the middle because they're going to split, but they're going to ride together. So I'm not going to put a zip tie all the way at the end because it has to split, but just to keep them parallel with, with each other, they go in the same location. Okay? Now, so I'm going to run this, this ground wire along the rest of this harness. I'm going to finish zip tying it up follow the factory harness and work my way back to that uh, that chassis ground back there <laughs> what? I got eyeballs on my fingers, man. Oh, you one of those, huh? Yeah. Let me see what I'm doing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna follow the same route. I'm 
need 10 mil. I'm gonna use a little zip gun. Zip that out. Always check and just make sure, you know, there's no corrosion or nothing like that. So this stuff is nice. Nice and clean already, so I don't have to go ahead and clean anything. And this is gonna be hand tight. But I'm gonna go ahead and tap it with the gun. That's that. I'm gonna go over with a ratchet. Some nail and ratchet back up here. Make sure she's nice and tight. Hand tight is good enough. Done. Um, EVAP tube connection. So when this thing is in the vehicle and it's already connected, okay, it, let me just hang this light. So this is in the vehicle sideways. It's a little better. I don't, sometimes you can't grab, you can't put your fingers on it because this is actually sitting just the way I have it and it's close to the tank. So sometimes you can actually rotate it. You want to just pull, let me do it again, pull the front side of it. Then on the back here, there's a button. If you don't pull that, it won't release the clip. So you have to pull, then press, and then pull it off of the gas tank. I see a lot of guys break this piece. So just, you know, don't get too mad at it. Take your time. If you can't uh, get it by hand, again, if it's in a vehicle like this, the tank is up here because you, you can only probably drop the tank about this much before actually taking this guy off, but everything else needs to be off. You could just take a pick, 90 degree pick, pull down on it, press, press it, and pull it off. Yep. All right, so as far as your fuel pump stuff, you got to connect the fuel pump harness that you, that you previously ran into this actual black connector here and reconnect your evap stuff and the actual the evap uh, hose that i was telling you is kind of a pain in the butt with the green connector and then you have the uh, uh fuel pressure uh fuel tank pressure sensor rehook him back up and now everything belongs where it needs to be i usually spray the filler neck hose um with a little bit of wd-40 um just so it's easier to to slide back on the actual tube and you kind of just like let you can lay this let this fuel pump harness just kind of like lay here it's out the way it's not going to contact anything there um everything is out of the way we don't have to worry about anything getting crushed when we're going back up with the tank um so all our connections are on already there you go let's double check it and uh, get your filler neck close as you can. That's kind of the pain in the butt with this, is getting him lined back up. But if you kind of stick one hand over the frame rail and work it back and forth, you get him started. Because the WD-40 kind of helps you out a little bit there. in there we're gonna get the bolt get a couple of threads to get started start my hand all right so that's started already i don't have to worry about the tank going nowhere mm -mm. okay that's all started Let me get rid of this guy Slide the clamp back in its original place. Let me grab my ratchet. And we're rolling. All right, so now after the install of the, uh, the fuel pump upgrade with the harness, um, it's pretty cool that this kit comes with a, um, a little test connector. 
Uh, what you could do is, obviously, you want to check and make sure you got no fuel leaks. So you can cycle the key on a few times, um, you know, for the back end or if you install the injectors, make sure you got no leaks up front. Um, with the test connector, you can go ahead and uh, you disconnect the hob switch. Okay. You can go inside, turn the key on. So the key is on. Then you take this jumper and you disconnect it to the actual hop switch connector. What it does is basically it's just looping like the hop switch C7 pounds. Um, and right now the pump is running. I can hear it turn on. So that's let us know that our second pump is running. Um, you always want to make sure you test that before you go out and doing some watt pulls or goofing around with your friends or whatever um, to make sure it's definitely coming on. We don't want to assume that it's not, we don't want to assume that it's, it's hooked up and it's not hooked up. Um, that also verifies all your connections that you made between um, the power, the main power, the actual fuse, which is your trigger, and then your ground that's connected over there on the fender well. And then also the ground for the pump in the back by the, um, by the tow hitch itself. Um, so again, I'm just gonna show you how you do it. You just connect it. You, I'm holding it in there. I can actually hear the pump running. Disconnect, the pump shuts off. And I can also hear the relay over there clicking. So it lets me know everything is good to go. Now I hope this back in, you will not hear the fuel pump run at this point because you do not have seven pounds. This thing only works at this C7 pounds. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we have no fuel leaks. Um, the fuel pump actually works. The stock fuel pump works. Um, so we're good to go. All right. Well, this concludes our fuel upgrades. And hopefully you liked the video. Do like, share, subscribe. And we do plan on continuing this build and uh, tech uh, installs for Undertaker and a few other vehicles that have a few upgrades that we find interesting or we think that someone will want to know. So do comment, like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys next time. Remember, for all of your Jersey, New York, uh, PA, Ford upgrades, Come on over here to Ron's Performance. Check us out. As you can see, man does great work. Heck, you actually got to see the man work. And you know the man does great work. So check us out. All right, boosted F-150 out.